Mr. Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized for as much time as he wishes to consume. And, Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days within which to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous material in the bill under consideration. Without objection, so ordered. Mr. Speaker, the STEM Education Act of 2015 is bipartisan legislation that includes computer science in the definition of STEM education for programs and activities at our federal science agencies. The bill also supports and strengthens ongoing STEM education efforts at the National Science Foundation. Similar legislation passed the House last year by voice vote. I thank Representative Elizabeth Esty for co-sponsoring the bill again this year. I also thank our new Research and Technology Subcommittee Chairwoman Barbara Comstock, Subcommittee Ranking Member Dan Lipinski, Subcommittee Vice Chair John Molinar, and Representatives Randy Holtgren, Larry Bouchon, Chris Collins, David McKinley, and Jamie Herrera Butler for their support. Last Congress, the Science, Space, and Technology Committee held several hearings on STEM education. Each hearing highlighted the importance of STEM education to keep America on the cutting edge of new products and ideas. Our hearings discuss the merits of ensuring computer science is included as a component of the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics that make up STEM education. Today, a variety of jobs and in industries from banking to engineering to medicine require familiarity with computer science. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, computing and mathematics will be one of the top 10 fastest growing major occupational groups from 2010 to 2020 with a growth rate of 4 percent annually compared to 1 percent for all other industries. Unfortunately, America lags behind many other nations when it comes to STEM education. American students rank 21st in science and 26th in math. That must change for the better. We need to ensure that our nation's youth have the scientific and mathematical skills to strive and thrive in a technology-based economy. But we have to capture and hold the desire of young adults to study STEM subjects so they will want to pursue these careers. H.R. 1020 includes language suggested by Mr. Lipinski to support informal STEM education programs and activities at the National Science Foundation. These activities reach students outside of the classroom and strengthen a student's engagement in STEM subject areas. The STEM Education Act also ensures that teachers working towards a master's degree program in STEM subjects can participate in the Robert Noyce Master Teacher Fellowship Program, and I thank Ms. Esty for this good addition to the bill. This program provides opportunities for teachers who want to bolster their teaching skills. Through the Master Teaching Fellowships, individuals receive training in order to become highly effective mathematics and science teachers. With this bill, the program now will encourage more teachers to pursue advanced degrees. A healthy and viable STEM workforce, literate in all STEM subjects, including computer science, is critical to American industries. A well-educated and trained STEM workforce ensures our future economic prosperity. Most graduates with STEM degrees means more advanced technologies and a more robust economy. Support for this bill from organizations like the STEM Education Coalition, STEM for Us, and Code-.org illustrate the importance of aligning our federal STEM programs with workforce needs. We must work to ensure that students continue to go into these fields so that their innovative ideas can lead to a more innovative and prosperous America. I encourage my colleagues to support this. And Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from Texas reserves his time.